we return with the TriCast returns. We have Lyrical Parker and Owie on the mic. Did I say the right people? Oh, good. I was like, is it Parker? I'm uh, 50 50 on the Parker Trent. Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, depending upon what's going on here. For battle. I don't know if they're gonna smoke into each other or not. It's like EG as opposed to five. We anxiously hope that they don't run at each other while we're on break. Oh, they coming. <laughs> 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 oh no, EG's drawing lines <laughs> into the tire side. You know TV. Oh, they can't hear me anyways, actually. Not in there. Okay, never mind. I'm dumb. <laughs> Welcome back, Dota fans. A big five man smoke into the jungle by EG as we are already into it. Uh, will not connect, but it does look like they're taking over this side of the map. We do have Parker as well as the wonderful Aoi 2000 joining us for today. Uh, and Parker, I just want to start off as we get into this EG versus Quincy crew matchup. Again, EG, if they win, they're going to be going through to the major. Um, the panel was talking about this Phoenix pick being a, a good answer uh, for like these big tanky strength hordes with percentage big damage as the game goes on. Do you see any problems with the hero at all? Do you like the pick? I like it a lot. I think it gives them a lot of damage. It also gives them a lot of team fight. And I know from last game, hey, you were kind of talking about this. Team fight in these best of ones in these 10 situations sometimes is like the most important thing to have. Yeah, for sure. I think it really ties their lineup together. I think it is the best of one pressure with the team fight that will really kick in here. Um, I think uh, the spirits are actually really good versus Alchemist too, because he's one of the heroes that relies on this BAT more than like plus attack speed. So any like minus attack speed you put on him is a huge multiplier. You saw that EG smoke to just to get this ward so they could predict the lanes. They really want this Timbersaw versus Phoenix matchup compared to versus Ursa. I think Timbersaw can pressure this Ursa hero in lane, but not if you have a Witch Doctor there. Ooh, they were gonna switch lanes, but then they saw Ursa TP top. Actually, I think I think I'm wrong. I think they want the Timbers over Stars and so <laughs> oh, I'm like, wait a second. I mean, they want something. We're not sure yeah. what, but they do want something. This is one of those things too, where it's like the the sort of next level plays of like who is it that needs farm at what particular point in time in the game to make it work is so important. And actually, up top you can see that Crit making the roll happen to get in position to body block that camp. They're putting so much emphasis on making sure I. Ice 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 doesn't get zoned out of this lane here. LA with a clutch deny there. Every experience oh. counts on this Timber Saw. Leslau in trouble bottom has to TP out and only Ooh. barely escapes. Nice scale underneath the acid spray deal. A lot of damage. I've actually never seen this lane before. The Phoenix versus um, Alchemist. In my head, like, Alchemist should farm pretty well, but Phoenix actually, he ramps up his lane pressure very hard when he gets to level 3. Interesting. That's going to be something to watch for because obviously Alchemist not known as the strongest hero uh, in lanes overall, but uh, I, I also feel like this Venomancer at times has been a little bit weird when we've seen it. I guess a lot of that's been because it's been like a team that's been running it on shoe. Uh, but w w I don't know, Parker, do you, do you like the sort of Veno 5? Um, I'm undecided. I kind of, I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I feel like we haven't seen any of these EGs, Quincy's, our Undying play the Venno as a five. So I'm kind of going into this one with an open mind. I feel like it's decent as a lane secure, but it's definitely not why his preferred five position. But the heroes he wanted to play were all banned out. Mm. I see. think this Venno hero, it's theoretically, it's really good versus Ursa Nyx, right? Because you just have these wards, you form a wall that it can't cross, and you're good for some team fights. Ooh, it's Nyx with a Courier Snipe. Radiant He's waiting, Curry going for it, and yeah, it's just dead. They were waiting for that one for a long time. Arteezy will not have his boots delivered out to him. Yeah, I remember uh, listening to PPD cast, and you just talk about these fours with boots. They're so annoying. I think they're good to snipe all your couriers. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's MSS, and I've heard you say a thing or two about MSS. I think it is good Mojo. as well, Curtis. <laughs> but yes, sometimes, you know, Mojo, high skill, sometimes, when I coach him, you have to bring him down a peg or he gets too cocky, so... 
Oh, speaking of which, gets himself a nice little stun here on Darteezy, and we'll go for the TP back to the uh, tower. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like one of those people that's just so good at something that you, you get annoyed at him, kind of. It's yeah, like, no, just be at easy. everything. Like, he just plays <laughs> random games. He's really good at them. Yeah. Ooh, roll. Back on to Quinn. Not able to find that remnant pullback. And, well, it looks like with the rotation coming in from Nyx, that's enough to just scare off uh, crit. So then we'll back out of there. Both mid laners getting the early bottles, using up all their charges, so this four minute room gonna be very important. Or we might even see one of these, you Open. know, supports go back to base for a bottle refill. Ooh, can they get Ice 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 here? Chase down coming. You are in the area. Just Tries please. to run him down, and with this Earth Shock afterwards and the Maledict on him, Ice 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 ends up. Oh my god, did he really get out of there? Oh, he's still in some trouble, but he gets the salve and the timber chain away. Oh, There's man. one tree left. One hit left on him, and uh, wait, they're going back on him. <laughs> oh, okay. crit, what a play from Crit. Crit snipes the bottom four minute rune. Nice. He rolled in as it spawned. Knew he wasn't going to secure it, so he just snipes it away from Quinn. This one, uh, this is why I like to see Top, though. Like, he's going into this counter matchup as uh, Timbersaw. He, he has to, he knows he's going to be playing versus a counter, so he doesn't, like, you know, he doesn't shy away from the fight, and he's going to be very fine in this lane. Like, that play Top. Ursa missed four CS while they were trying to kill that Timbersaw. It's like, it's a correct play by Yawr to go for that, but I say Ice just with the O plays. Yeah, that's so interesting too, because like if you can get something out of a lane, which Ice has been known to do that, no, oh, pull back. Trying to find that kill onto Quinn. Slight of fist dodge, but he is going to get ran down here. First blood drawn by crit. But as I was sort of saying, like if you can get something out of that lane that you're not supposed to, it's such a huge boon for your team. Oh, yeah. nice. Ice almost lives for these pig moments. He loves playing like the hard matchups, it feels like. Yeah, he's super annoying. I'll dig that. <laughs> Play against. <laughs> Abbott actually hands off the bottle to crit there, and he's able to do a support job and go get the bounty room from. I'm actually a bit surprised that they didn't try to snipe a Quincy Crew's bounty room there. They killed the enemy mid at like 440, I think. Generally, it's pretty free in the back bounty. Bottom line, Fly could be in some trouble here. Looks like Ice will get away from yeah. top, but Fly does pay, and he TP'd on that one, too. That hurts. Did. Back on him, trying to mine that kill. On to Quinn, but he gets the root again. there. On to two, and instead, he's going to get a follow-up kill on to Crit. They came for one, but uh, that was not the one they were hoping. <laughs> oh, he goes level six on Void Spirit. Ooh, dangerous. LOA, able to dodge away, does get killed eventually. Quinn, salving back up, but he does not have his level six yet. And actually, Abed denying that creep. Quinn maybe could have gone for something there if he got his level six at that point. That was a- uh, Insta TP's mid, refills the bottle now. That was a pretty cool sequence of plays. Like, Crit rolled in, he kicked them. Oh, oh. Nice. Again! Damn, dude. He may have died mid lane, but he has done so much work this game for it. Trying the to get- The coordination between Abbott and Crit is very nice to see. Like, uh, he rolled in, he kicked, Quinn back, and the Remnant was already going down for the kick. It barely missed there, but that could have been the kill on Ember Spirit. I mean, Crit gets turned on because Quinn's a manly man and manages to turn that around, uh, which is, uh, Quinn messaged me. He says that's a, a peg man. Apparently new emote. Very important. Oh, wait a oh, minute. It, it comes Quinn. in and breaks it again. That is That's big. so hard to deal with now. And they're going to get a TP moving in the area from MSS. Remnant not going to connect. Radiance and LOA able to find the stun. Time. They have maybe gone a bit too far, but the glyph of the wave, so tower damage won't be dealt. Doesn't matter. They get the kill. Just these teams are, this is a real battle, you know? Like, we have the old plays from both teams. Like, this is, this is solid Dota. I love to see this. It's such a different pace of game to what the EG Undying one where EG just seemed to know they could beat Undying by playing this, you know, slow, farm-oriented EG style. But it feels like they know against Quincy, they have to make moves. I mean, last game, like, it's not like the heroes really changed, right? Like, their space makers are a spirit and an earth spirit. Okay, okay. Double spirit. Two spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I said that in my head. Okay. I'm like, oh my god, what am I saying? A mid again? Another roll mid. Got him. Remnant oh. down, pulls him in. Abed there in the silence afterwards. Paired together perfectly, but will be able to get the jump away. There's still a tower yeah, shot hit, no? Is it enough with the urn? Oh, oh my god, 10 HP on Quinn there. That was so close. Calculated, easy. <laughs> As down bottom, Fly will drop yet again. Very fast paced game so far here at eight minutes, uh, two to four in terms of the kills, but a lot of just, you know, bouncing back and forth between these two teams.
Isis, Isis forces out OT from Ursa top. Hey, Isis, Isis is doing really well for himself top, honestly. He's pretty much been 2v1 while Crit has been making all these plays. And like, Quincy, they don't have the same range of support motion. Or freedom to- I, the supports did a really good move, they killed Abbott. But they can't do it in the same way that this Earthspring is like super freed up because Isis is just being a Chad. Mm -hmm. I totally agree, but I think at the same time, you look at Leslaw, like he's a full thousand gold ahead of Ice 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 in terms of his net worth. This Phoenix has had the freest lane down bottom, even though Alchemist is farming. Leslaw has got a lot of items. He's going to have such a fast spirit vessel. Honestly, this Alchemist, he's sort of being shut down. Like I looked at the CS tab, like, wow, Alchemist has a lot of CS, but he's basically the same net worth as Ursa. I expected him to have a bit more than that. Well, and the thing I think that's so interesting about it, right, is that we, we normally see so many heroes rotate to Quinn's lane. He was left with mainly just LOA rotating in with a couple of MSS moves, but it feels like they're putting way more pressure or emphasis this time on trying to make sure that the Phoenix at least has a decent laning stage and, uh, you know, getting the levels that he needs so he can have that percentage-based damage in the mid game. Radiant bottom tower is under uh, Mojo? MSS is under award. I don't have anything to stop a TP out, and yeah, he's just going to go for a TP. <gasps> oh! Just in time. Nicely played there. And MSS is going to try and do a little bit of damage before he goes down. Oh, deny. Deny. He's thinking about it. He wants it. Can't happen. Kelly Ogre, you're sorry. That was a good uh, movement by Abbott. They're very quick to come as soon as they see that next. And uh, EG, like, they see him on the ward, but they don't go for him right away, right? Like, they're waiting for Abbott to connect. So that's just a sign of, like, good communication. I think a big part of why this Alka is suffering is kind of goes back to some of the questions asked with the Venom pick. And the reason I wasn't so keen on it is it feels like a hero that's good for the game, but it's not good for the lane. I feel like where EG and Fly have had the most success is, you know, having those strong laners. Enchantress is such a top pick in NA because it wins your lane. Gold yeah, for sure. I think uh, this hero, like, his in-game impact is probably going to be high this game. But I completely agree. Like, this hero, he offers nothing in lane. He's like some low range. Oh, okay. he snipes a courier. Very nice, very nice. On the other side, LOA going to drop most likely here to Abed. Uh, they did have a bottle refill, rather an urn refill on Leslau here, who now is going on to fly yet again. Spirit Vessel is done. And we'll see if he has to pop egg at all, because it's a good amount of damage going towards him. He has Fairy Fire still, so he's probably fine. Yeah, this is, a, this is a very early Spirit Vessel. I really like this pick of Phoenix, because Ember is a good Spirit Vessel carrier, carrier. I mean, at one point, it was like just Ooh. better to rush that back mid. Oh, a big jump. Oh my goodness. And Quinn trying to survive through the Magnetized Remnant, trying to get out of there. It's not going to happen. They got him. Sorry, it wasn't even needed. <laughs> very close to that. I think Earthspring is solo XP for now. He's level 7 now. That's really big. They're going tall. Bottom lane, they're taking the tower, keeping the siege wagon alive. So that's going to be a tower for Quincy. And they get this kill on UR. Dude, this Timbersock here versus Ursa, like, it's not that bad. Like, he, ha he has four points in the W, and, like, he can Radiant's pressure this guy. It's hard to sustain versus attack. Timbersock here if you have any starting Dyer's lane. Top tower is under now, attack. they do have a Phoenix TP if they want to take this fight. MSS moving around Vendetta, but there is that sentry down. Um, what Quincy want to happen here is they want to force EG to dive them before they have to commit TPs. So they're gonna play really deep behind the tower and try not to like, try to make EG overcommit before the TP. You don't want to TP here and get nothing. And they're just gonna want to TP Yeah, yeah they're, they're gonna see UR bottom now. I think EG knows it's just a free tower once UR is not there anymore. They are trying to pressure Arteezy back here a little bit. Quinn playing up in his face in the mid lane, uh, cutting that wave as well as everybody moving back into position. Abed is here alone underneath that tier one tower but obviously lots of TPs can move in at a moment's notice. And he's trying to get the pressure on. Stun comes out, Witch Doctor ulti afterwards, Radiant's they get the remnant. That stops attack. the damage. As LOA backs away, still a good chunk of damage there onto Abed. And actually with the Fire Spirits on him too, there's gonna be a nice chunk of Maledict damage here. Has to dissimilate from it. I Radiant's love making that really well set up. Under attack. Yeah, they had the Phoenix kind of flanking so they could catch Abed after the Astral Step, but they couldn't quite get enough damage out. Sometimes a Witch Doctor, you just throw Radiant's your ulti just to make a core attack. heal, and it's like, it's pretty worth it. Like, the cooldown's really low. And, I mean, we've been saying Arteez has been pressured, Dyer's but he's top still a top net worth Alchemist. Attack. He's not feeling too bad. It's just, I'm surprised how much they were able to do with the Phoenix next lane. Like, that lane on paper does not seem that good to me. Unless I was just super fat this game. Very interesting stuff there, as we did see Arteezy pushed back uh, all the way to his tier 3 towers. They hit the scan, knew that they were coming, uh, so of course not getting that alchemist kill, but still just being annoying. 
and he doesn't have a completely free game as we've seen some of these Alks get. Radiant's bottom tower. Yeah, he's falling back to his triangle now with a Battle Fury though, so his farm is gonna start to accelerate, but a little bit slower Battle Fury timing than, than normal. Very Trinka. Nice. So a thousand gold lead, a little bit less than that actually for Quincy crew right now. Uh, and we can see some of the strength now of this Venomancer pick, right? Oh, Two nice. points up in wards as, oh, trying to go on him. And catching Ice Ice Ice, well done with the Carapace. Nyx is still pretty good against Timber. Yeah, I mean, at cool. the end of the day, this is a first two Timbers all pick. It was picked third overall in the draft, and it was picked against a hero that I think he's traditionally considered bad against, which is the Witch Doctor. So, despite how well Ice has has been playing, I think Quincy Crew has identified like this hero is like he's not really gonna do that much this, this game in their eyes. I mean, we'll see about Ice Ice because he's a crazy man. <laughs> but yeah, I think I've seen this like Veno Alchemist stuff where like you know you have the Veno he stalls out with wards. I'm pretty sure OG ran it when Fly was playing with them like Kia Major and stuff. But yeah, I'm curious how it works with the Veno as a five because I think back then it was a core hero. going to be uh, interesting to watch for sure and and you know you, you talk about the sort of potential blow-up ability that this Timbersaw has with like Maledict in the game with Ursa in the game he's going straight BKB so like this Veno kind of needs to be that hero that can hold the lane up until the point where Ice 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 can live through an engagement because uh, otherwise they're just going to lose their towers and then get a ton of pressure onto that Alk in the jungle and well, look at Mojo's build he's actually going to max the mana burn this game hmm oh Walt lane it gets out. Hey, Ice 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 needs to die here. He can't be allowed to keep Dyer's pushing this lane like this. Dead. Some point they're gonna smoke and just go kill him. ITP's out. Some point so I mean, <laughs> Oh. Ice is Ice knows. Ice is out, and it's EG who are grouped on that <gasps> triangle. They're ready for this move. Yeah, LOA and Quinn maybe in a little bit of trouble there. The roll and come, silence afterwards. They need to break it. Yeah. It looks like they'll kill the Witch Doctor, and Quinn, good dodge there as he just jumps back to his remnant. Another one thrown oh. out. Abed moving for the chase down. But Quinn gets away. Now, these two mid laners going up against each other is always such a pleasure to watch. And now with an Orchid on top end, this game kind of gets completely chased. We're going to see mid lane. Ember Spirit gets jumped with the Orc. Now they got the damage for this. They followed up with a crit roll. And Quinn is going to go down here after the silence. Oh, he gets a slide of pistol. No way does he live. He goes down. Oh, well, time, though. They're going to a lot of damage here. And they even find the kill onto crit with Leslau. All of that Spirit Vessel damage and everything else. But he didn't get the refill on the Spirit Vessel charge. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's not a great trade anyways. But they get something at the very least. Uh, this Venomancer is just so annoying. I think it's we're starting to see its purpose to really come to fruition here. Yeah, they, they can sort of stall out for that alchemist. It does create a, a pretty scary situation. And now you can see Quincy Crew doing all these ways of trying to invade and make some plays happen to, to catch Arteezy. Uh, or just shut off the areas where he can farm, but it's not an easy kill. He's already got Assange done. There's so many heroes around him. There's four heroes around him. They jump in now. Arteezy pops ult. He runs away. Silence out. Abed trying to find all these kills. Spike here that's not going to connect. They throw out the stun. Witch Doctor Ultimate afterwards. Connecting on the Abed. He is maledicted. Ice 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 misses a little bit there on the chop room as Quinn jumps in, tries to find this finish, and will get it. So silence was out and a trade of one for one, but Ice also going to drop. War in the area, and he's able to play a little bit of cleanup. Really solid move by Quincy Crew there. I think identifying the weak, uh, they're stronger even though that Ursa doesn't have his BKB. Like, this guy is in the fights and doesn't even have his timing yet. I really like this play from Yawar. Man, he's kept up with Alchemist, huh? Like, they're both 9k net worth. Farming That's really impressive. well, just playing really well. I mean, he had a free lane, and while we talked about like Ice and Ice being annoying and stuff, like that's all he really was, like a small nuisance. Nuisance to the Yeah, I think for EG, you really got to play around that, like maybe three item timing on Alka at this point. You can't keep forcing these fights. And he, he realized it too, right? He's going Sanja to BKB. Like, he's not even finishing that SMI or anything. They feel like right now the pressure's on. Like, they got this Orchid on Abed. It was a really good kill on Ember Spirit. They did the move they needed to, but their follow up right now is limited to Alka's BKB. MSS. Marjo? 
Just jump down bottom, push back in, spike carapace before the orchid. But it looks like they'll still be able to chase him down and kill him off. It, it does provide some interesting little ideas here though, right? Because like, if Ursa is able to keep up, then it feels like this Veno delaying doesn't matter quite as much uh, as it would otherwise. Like the, if, if he's able to sort of stay somewhat even, it, would you, are you guys still as worried about the Alchemist going to the late game? I, I feel like I've seen Alk go into the late game, unlike in the past patches, where Alk still remains this big late game threat. It doesn't seem to fall off like the old Alk does. Yeah, I completely agree. It's a swift blink, right? Like, he just does so much damage. Yeah. Like, Ursa is one of the better ones against that, because how Alk works is like, you know, you you, you charge your sun, you rot sun, you, you swift like Abyss with him, and then you stun him and you burst him. But Ursa, like, in the late game, he'll have this eggs and he can turn it around. But, uh, nah, Alk, Alk? He's such a strong hero because he doesn't fall off. Like I had this concept in my head of like this old alchemist where you can sort of outscale him with these juggernauts. Like it used to be like Jug Magnus would outscale him. I'm not too sure you can do that anymore. He just kills you. But Mojo finding ice. Ooh. Ice too good. Gets out. That's a five man rotation for nothing. Tower is under attack. That was close. He barely didn't get the carapace off there. If he got that, that was a dead timber and possibly Roshan. Still worried Radiant's about Roshan. AG gonna scan it up and... Mid. Oh, Quinn rolled on. Orchid trying to bring him down here, but MSS in the area, hoping to get a safe. Great stun right as he came out. All right, he's pretty good at Dota. That was sick. Oh. So cocky, but so deserved. AG <laughs> just couldn't quite get the clean initiation. Both the Astral Step and the Rolling Boulder didn't land. They only got him with the slow from the Boulder Smash. That was just good positioning by Quinn there. You saw his teams from yeah. the left, so he's positioning on the left side of the tower. I think it's understated how much uh, just standing on the right side of the tower uh, matters. And that's uh, that's a pickup they wanted to Roshan. It was supposed to be Ice, but instead they got the bigger kill. And that's a free Roshan right there. What's so interesting about that too is that th that only happens because EG hit the scan as Quincy crew were moving through the river to go towards mid. And like, uh, they weren't going for Roche. Oh, that's dangerous. Roll through, walks up the high ground. Yeah, tries to blow him up. Silence is there. Extra move in from Lesla. We still haven't seen an egg. And does he decide to go for it? The heal coming out from that Sunray. Not enough. And Lesla still in trouble. Gets the egg off right in time. Kills off Kurt with it. And can they chase down LOA here? Stun comes out, connects onto Timbersaw with his BKB out as well. So two for two as they look for more, but Abed cleans up another. MSS dropping as well. This is a that was first a, item BKB Timbersaw. <laughs> That's a first, perhaps. Maybe That's not That's super that. good, this game, I think, right? Like, he's countered, but if you just have BKB, Ursa can't hit you because you won't be stunned. And all of a sudden, you're the one, like, slowing him and dealing damage to him. Sounds good. We can see here, uh, Ice a bit underneath the average net worth at 20 minutes for a... Radiance middle Sorry, oh, that's the Alchemist, not the Timber Soul. So yeah, Alchemist is on that. pace here. Uh, Al Alchemist is... He, he's definitely going to keep pulling ahead of this, uh, this game. He's going to start spiking up. I mean, honestly, you don't get that much from Grievous Green and Lane, but I thought his CS like looked higher than uh, I usually see in Alchemist, but... Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Can't get over it. Ice, Ice is Ice is playing really on point this uh, entire day, honestly. Very impressive. It's going to be an interesting thing to watch here as BKBs are done for both the Timber Saw as well as the Alchemist. And Timber's actually queuing up his action of Shard Yak next. So that, that flamethrower right. just getting thrown around. I <laughs> This guy always entertains. It's going to be really interesting to watch how this item build progresses and you know what they try and do with it. Uh, if it's just buying more space for Alk to get his farm on and become that like terrifying late game force or if they actually want to get involved right now with these BKBs. I think EG has done a pretty good job with their game plan this game. Like they put Ice Ice on this hero early, this early Timber Salt pick, he didn't even see anything for it. Just because they knew that they could get this, they had this Earth Spirit and they can roam on Quinn. Like right now, this is the worst game I think I've seen Quinn have in the DPC. Mm. It's pretty shut down. I mean, he, it's not like he's played badly. It's just so many resources are focused on him. They keep going on him at the start of fights. Dangerous here. You gotta watch out. Movement. They have a DD on Abed as well. They're looking for an opening. Finds one. Stun out. The heal coming as well from Leslow. It's not enough. War still has that Aegis available if they want to move in on it. Silent stun. Leslow has the egg available if he wants to place it back a little bit further. LOA ulti going out also as Ice 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 BKB pop. They finally pop that egg as it's Abed and now Quinn for the cost of one, but Quinn actually bought back careful. into this. 
He might die back if he's not careful here. Okay. Jump back up. Well, Radiant's still playing it very he aggressive. Has a flink if he can channel another stun here. Looking around, wanting to take this tier two tower. It's a lot committed. Dwarf, thought about jumping. They went for the spike carapace play, but it wasn't quite good enough. Aegis oh, down. Now I say size very, very low. Trying to back away as Quinn gets the silence out onto him, pops the stick, tries to walk away. Throws out that remnant, but yeah, Quinn's in some trouble to jump forward. Flight of Fifth jump away afterwards, but Fly chases him down. And now he wards left completely alone. The stun is gonna come out, pops the enrage, tries to turn this one. Does he have any help, any friends? MSX is looking in a position. MSX gets that kill. Now looking for a second one. Spike Kirpus comes out, connecting on to Crit you are still so freaking low. But he has his BKB back up, and there's the TP away. And it looks like RTZ gonna run in and punish MSS for the other kill. What a wild series of moments. Wow, oh, that was a two minute a fight, fight behind a tier two. <laughs> and uh, I don't even know who came out ahead. I'm assuming EG came out ahead in that, like Quinn die backed. But uh, yeah, that was um, really good kiting. And like how EG baited the buyback in the fight was really nice. He waited for him to over uh, commit and then crit. Saves his buyback for that moment. And now I think. I mean, Ursa didn't die, which is really big, and now he has this blink dagger. He's gonna try to like chomp down these supports before they get spells off in fights. Yeah, this game's gonna be wild. It looks like. He get a slightly top. bigger lead. The team fight recap showing like a one thousand gold advantage going EG's way, but the Ember buyback. You mentioned how Quinn's having a rough game. Well, that kind of continues here. This is rough. An answer for the he's Orchid. not going to play Dota until he gets this BKB, and he's he's pretty far right now, honestly. Also, like, I think with these fights where, like, everyone dies, if Alchemist doesn't die, like, he farmed a lot of gold during that. Like, right after the fight, they didn't gain that much, but I think he got another 2k just by farming some jungle camps and pushing out a lane. I think this is going to be such an interesting game so as, as a test to Quincy crew, right? Like so often they just play around Quinn in this game. It really feels like it's Les Lau that's like the playmaker, the guy that needs to get it all done. Uh, he's given been given so much farm and it's going to be tough because uh, he's on a freaking Phoenix, but we'll see how it goes. As a bit late on the smoke here for Quincy crew. I think they want to hit EG at the bounty runes. And this Veno hero is just being so annoying. Like, these wards are just everywhere. It's hard to place vision. In the fight we saw bottom, like, I'm sure that hero did a lot of damage there. And even if he didn't do any damage there, he's just so annoying. Just slowing down the fight, kiting Ursa. So we do have the flamethrower out now, uh, not only doing the 90 damage per second, but also uh, getting the slow on people for 30%. So oh, kind of an interesting thing. It lasts three seconds. That's really long. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good for Ursa because I think he's going to be enraged, but you can keep applying it on him. So like that plus the Venom slows, that's a lot of like once his BKB is over, like he's pretty done in these fights. It feels like he's just trying to do as much damage as possible during the BKB. So he's like, well, all these spells have cooldowns. Let's get another spell. Let's get the flamethrowers to do even more damage. Crit. Crit. Yeah. It's going to drop. As a there. good place hot by Ursa, just blocking that boulder. Oh, Arteza wants to go in, though. He's charging a stun. Life of a five. How uh, dare you kill Crit? What's wrong with you? Freaking SVG. <laughs> Come in and get the kill. Alchemist finishing that AC now while the Basher is completed for the Ursa. As MSS will do a little bit more scouting here. No sentry wards in vision. Uh, and interestingly enough, no Necro 3 heroes in this game. <laughs> So he can play it a little bit safe. Goes for the stun. This is okay. cancel RTZ's TP out. Agents Feels like board. he's being annoying more than anything. I said Ice Force should just go in to uh, uh, get a kill. Okay. That's what he's doing. Yeah, and now he's gonna, trying to run. Get out. They're trying. He is. He's away. Rock. What a play. Gamer. Your anger is useless. That's impressive. <laughs> Isis is such like he shows up when it's the big games. Like Ooh, and the you know, tips he has come all games. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dude, whatever. He canceled he canceled Arteezy's bling or a TP. That's what's important here. Yeah. <laughs> I like that high level tipping too. Like they don't tip up all at once, they stagger it so it's on the screen for longer. Mm. Very high level. Here's a good award from uh, Quincy though. They might think about jumping mid. They can rotate the Ursa over. So hard to do this again. Oh wait, Abed. 
stunned. Which Dr. Ultimate still going. Can they get the rune afterwards? Doesn't look like it's assimilated. Arcezy jumps forward, trying to kill off LOA yet again. A good chunk of damage here off to the side as you are trying to chase down Arcezy. Still has that Sphere Vessel on him for afterwards. Quinn chasing. Root is there as well, but War already gave up on the fight. Decided to head back. Didn't want to dive too deep. I think something that you just talked about and they're doing really well is how they hold their BKBs. Like, Arteezy's getting jumped there, he doesn't BKB. We saw also the tier 2 bottom fight where Isis I did pop his BKB to very late fight on still, did they? Well, they force Quinn's BKB. I mean, that's not holding your BKB. Quinn gets jumped on and just, I mean, kind of panicked, but also kind of just needed to pop it to stay alive. Yeah, and Quincy could need to get out. Like, this Earth is getting slowed by the Veto too, but they have no BKB. They don't have a uh, way to fight right now. The rude of invisibility. I think the other thing we're seeing EG do really well is play around their vision. They're using the Void Spirit True Sight from his remnants to de-ward, and then just, they've just got complete oh, ward control themselves. Vision in the area. Arteezy queuing up that stun, but decides not to go in, and is going to stay outside instead. Very weird game right now, but you do see that Quinn on the other side of the map with his Invis rune gonna try and get some farm on maybe in a bit is actually EG going to Rose. This is a relatively quick respawn here. Yeah, they did a good Still job no controlling the mission. Oh, yeah. I, there is... I don't think they realize Quincy gonna ward down on the other side of the river because here come Quincy. Oh, and look at these wards that are placed down. They're breaking yours, Blink. He has it back up again, jumps into everybody, pops the enraged turn, almost gets the kill on a crit. Not quite there though. Now let's go right in with the taunt. The catch, can he get out off in time? No, couldn't get a spirit vessel, couldn't get anything. Oh my goodness. They kill the Phoenix and no buyback. I think EG gonna force this Roche now though. Wow. Wild stuff there. He's 56 gold away. Where are the bounty runes? In 30 seconds, they can maybe get him back up. He's going to be responding at that point anyways. And Roche is so low right now. Yeah, this ward like, is like, a saving grace for Quincy crew right now. If they didn't have this ward on the top river, yeah. like this Roche would be dead. They wouldn't be able to do anything. Oh, well, they just killed the ward. <laughs> Still that other one that's oh, up on yeah, the high the ground. behind them. That one's really good. They see yeah. EG's in for it now. And pops it. BKB out afterwards. Arteezy trying to finish this one off. See if they can make it happen. The steal is going to be there. Quinn made the play they needed. Jump in now from Ursa afterwards. He's in down fairly low. Do they have any heal? Anything at all? Pops the enraged, but still going to die. Now Spike Carapus goes out. Connects the stun onto several. They're back in again and with a second. And look at the damage coming out from the Phoenix. But they already blew up two mass buybacks coming in here as Leslau looking for an opening. Can they find any of these heroes? God, these Plague Wards are just so difficult to play around. As Ice 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 pops the BKB and then manages to get away. So getting the last hit on Roche and taking the Aegis. Big play Radiant's there by Quinn. Arteezy managed to snipe the cheese Radiant into the Radiant Fountain right now. Fortified. Man, these fights are so close. Like, Ursa is, he just barely doesn't have their, his ultimate because they've just been fighting for so long. Like, Quinn barely snags at Aegis and I mean, EG, like, they recognize that even though we lost Aegis, like, we can still take this fight. They've used too many of their resources just getting past their Venom Wards. Like, you have to, like, BKB earlier, you have to ult earlier on Ursa, and it leads to them taking a pretty good fight there. And it feels like, conversely for EG, you mentioned, you know, is able to hold his BKB until much later on in the fight, making it so much harder for Quincy to kind of secure these kills. Also, I'm a bit surprised this Phoenix has, he seems to have like fallen off a bit, right? Like he had such a good early game, but I'm not quite seeing the impact I would expect to see out of that start. Industry. I think yeah. it's, it's really hard for him to play these fights though. Like, with Earth Spear and Void Spear, they're just trying to jump him. He hasn't been able to get Aeg off in the last fight. Yuar pops in rage, tries to get out of there in time, but he is in a world of hurt, no help nearby. He gets pummeled. Evil geniuses taking another kill here onto this witch doctor, giving the tip afterwards to more than a couple people. EG are feeling themselves. They think they couldn't turn the corner. Dude, see, they caught the carry at five, but they're tipping Mojo. <laughs> yeah. They're, you know. Remaining consistent from earlier, I guess, getting in Mojo's head. I don't know. I feel like the last time these two teams played, Crit played Nyx three times, and now Mojo's on Nyx. And it just sure. seems like this four, like, this Nyx four, it hasn't Dyer's been seeing the impact that 
I expected with like it has such early picks and it's given Radiant's such high priority and it got nerfed but still given some sort of priority in the pick and I mean, he's been playing pretty well but I don't know what Radiant's his hero does in a game like this. I feel like you compare that to Crit, and Crit just in the first five minutes of the game had like the most crazy impact of a fourth position I've ever seen. For sure. He was making plays all over the well, just around the mid lane, but he was just making such a big difference on that mid lane. It's like your map presence with Vix early is so weak. Well, no Aegis, no problem. Looking for that stun, misses it. Root afterwards, Arteezy pops his shard, giving himself that potion. And, I mean, does he have a TP to get back here? He doesn't. Quinn, wait, what? He can't get here. Uh, they're taking his racks. And Quincy crew now in a lot of trouble. And they don't have their Emperor for this one. And they're going to see him moving across on that ward. Maybe no, they don't quite see it. But nonetheless, they're still sticking around this area. They say Sice, it's hit with the Maledict. Abed moving in yet again. Quinn coming from the backside now. Who can he find? Does manage to get that silence off. Hanging on to that BKB as long as possible. Waiting, seeing if he can get some extra value out of it. Pops it now. All up turn, I say Sice goes for the chains away as Quinn continues to run forward, looking for Arteezy. Can he kill him off in time though? It doesn't quite look like a crit. A little bit of a weird boulder there, but gets the silence, gets the taunt. Oh, no. And now Quinn going to fall as by back but this is deadly less loud does have egg pops it now i think they turns onto it you are trying to get a match this egg is gonna pop as the sun comes out but it doesn't look like it's gonna matter they've already lost two and they're not buying back on quint arteezy just walks away and quincy crew can't find a fight that works for them Abed, maybe okay that's one they get the kill on the voice spirit that's what it looks like right there <laughs> all right give me a tip where you at mss come on <laughs> yeah, you got to tip in his position. <laughs> <laughs> they took your racks, but you know, you gotta put some swag on. I mean, honestly, I'm looking at this Alchemist hero. Like, before, I think Ember used to be good with Alchemist, because you could. Well, how Alchemist works is like you're on a timer in fights as soon as you pop this ultimate. And Ember could sort of stall that out. But he got chains, and he just has this new uh, shard. And he takes off the chains, and Ember can't do anything to him. Quinn overextends to get those chains off, but he just dies for it. He is smoking oh, for more for Mojo. Mm. Oh, is anyone going? Oh, he's down the void for one of force is five. This is a little insane. Oh, gotcha. LOA there. Stun. <laughs> Not going to connect. Not going to connect. Up for now. Me. Four bounty runes for EG, most likely. All right, Yawa has his Abyssal Blade. So they finally have some sort of hard initiation. Because it's hard for, like, Nyx is a very hard hero to initiate on until you have Blink Dagger. And even Den, like, he's a hero that you want to survive the round of BKB so you can have this high impact in the fight later. Bounty. Now with Yawa with the Abyssal, he should just look to kill off this, like, Venomancer or Earth Spirit. Unfortunately, they have um, they have a Halberd on Ice Ice, so that means he has to commit BKB. And they also have this four staff on Venom, which means they can save for it. I, I can't say enough about how well I feel like Arteezy has been playing this game. And it's not like often that you say that, but he's sort of been around fights. He's kind of been involved in them sometimes. And at 35 minutes, he's nine, zero and 10 on this elk against like a, a, a like a what nine minute spirit vessel or something like that this nyx assassin that can find you in the jungle like obviously eg has been doing a good job of like trying to protect him but the fact that Lady he's been able to stay that involved and attack. still stay deathless i think Dyer's that's a huge part of why they're winning this game attack. for sure and this was like a game of alchemist chicken right like both teams picked heroes that they thought would counter this alchemist and the EG, okay we're picking this alchemist anyways and despite that like he has his Abyssal and like the timing for Quincy is very hard. Like they need to get a fight on their vision, which is hard because Abbott took the Remnant vision and they have this Venom Master, so they're just controlling the map really well. I think EG came into these games with Dying really good game plans. Like first on Dying, they kneel that like, if you sustain a Dying's pressure, their percentage of making mistakes is actually, I think, higher than the, higher than Quincy Cruz at least. Like they're still a very good team at what they do. And then versus Quincy Crew, like, if you can control their map movements early, like, you have the higher map presence with the Earth Swim versus Nyx, and then you play these, like, Venomancers and map control with Wards and Remnant, like, you're gonna do well versus them. Last for Rafa Quincy, perhaps. This smoked up. Looking for it. You are just got the shard as well. Extra Fury Swipes gives him enrage, but the Yule Scepter lift up. Now Arteezy jumps onto the Nyx. BKB already out. No answer. Silence on the left loud. Does have the egg available if he wants to pop it here. Again, another Silence. Disarm. The egg is out. And the Sunray coming to try and heal up your war and keep him alive. Ice Ice Ice, regardless, moving in, gets stunned mid chains, but the roll comes afterwards. Left loud tries to back out. You are still in trouble. Going to die. No buyback. 90 seconds. Everybody.
everybody's lifted up in the air with this Yule Scepter combo. There's Les Lau in a world of hurt, nowhere left to dive. He's just going to die. And with four dead and very few buybacks, is this going to be EG going to the major? They got their eyes set here, but they need a creep wave. What a freaking win for EG. Oh, it's just so hard for Quincy to take these fights. Like, you kind of mentioned anyway, like, it feels like Yor has to pump his BKB just to kill a Venomancer there. Instead, he gets healed. But even if he pumps his BKB, the fight doesn't go any different. EG is just so far ahead. They're so strong. But they just have way too many tools to play around these fights with. And Arteezy's out, which is uncounted. Oh, and the jump in now. Arteezy blows up the Witch Doctor. He still has a buyback available. One tier four tower remaining. The buyback comes. They're going to use the Glyph. Try and slow this down as much as possible. It's 20 seconds till the next hero is even back up. Zabed jumps in, Quinn able to retreat, but I don't know if they're gonna have what it takes. Evil geniuses are pulling it back, GG. And they are gonna be your first representative from North America at the Major. Wow.